Hello everyone, welcome again. Today we'll be talking about the energy topic um, and in particular we'll be looking at a first-hand investigation of the distillation of ethanol and water. So remember we spoke about fractional distillation already and now we're going to take it, we're going to scale it down to a more laboratory um, friendly sort of practical. Okay, so this is our standard apparatus, a distillation um, apparatus and so we'll explain what each part is and how we're going to use it to separate ethanol and water because that's quite an important um, process even in industry. Okay? So first let's talk about why we want to do this. Okay? So ethanol and water are extremely soluble in one another. That doesn't really tell us why we want to separate them but it does give us some hints as to the difficulty or the level of difficulty this is going to have. Now ethanol is heavily used in industry so it's used as a solvent um, sometimes in, perf in the perfume industry, um, it's also used as a fuel, so E10 has 10% ethanol in it. Um, it's also used in the production of ethylene or ethene, which is then used for plastic. So it's used you know, in a whole broad range of different um, applications. So having pure ethanol is of course useful for the industry. Now, it can be produced renewably from fermentation at concentrations of 15%. So if we want renewable ethanol for fuel, for plastic, for perfume or solvents, we can only get 15% concentration in any particular system. So when we put our sugar and our yeast in a big container, only 15% of that will be ethanol when you're done. That's what V to V means, volume per volume. So the remaining 85% will be water, mostly, and some other um, small parts like yeast and things like that. So of course there we go, that in itself tells us what we need to do. We have 15% ethanol and we have the rest water. So we want to separate it so we can get that pure ethanol, right? So in order to use it effectively, um, in order to mix it with our petrol, we need to get completely no water, just anhydrous ethanol. So that's why we need to separate it. Uh, in many other applications, we need pure ethanol as well. So there's many reasons to separate this. So what we do? Um, we set up the equipment as shown here. So uh, we've got our Bunsen burner down the bottom there. And we've got a water bath going here. And we'll talk about why we need that um, in the future, in a little bit um, later on. And so here is our distillation flask. And the crude mixture we're talking about is just our ethanol water mixture. So we're just going to pour all our mixture in here and then heat it, right? Using this water bath and Bunsen burner. Now, when it evaporates, it comes up into here, our condenser tube. And our condenser tube essentially has water flowing around it, cold water, which will cool um, the inner part of this tube, which will then cause the gases to condense. Then once they condense, they'll drip down into our collection beaker down there. Okay, So that's what we're expecting to do with this particular prac. And it's not a very fast prac, so you have to be a little bit patient. Uh, it will be quite slow at the start. So just, just keep bear that in mind. So what we do is we place 100 mils of 20 to 80 ratio ethanol to water. So 20 mils ethanol, 80 mils water into a distillation flask. So we pour this mixture, 20 mils, 80 mils, into here, and we have 100 mils in total, and we pour it in there, okay? We heat it gently um, to a temperature of, so the temperature of the water bath should be kept at 78 degrees Celsius. And we'll talk about why, in the question segment, why we want to keep it at this particular temperature. That's what we're doing. And then we collect 20 mils of the distillate. So after we've condensed it and things like that, we'll get 20 mils here, then we stop, okay? So if that makes sense, we'll move on to our typical results. So, you know, results, we always want, we're quite result oriented here. So we always want to know what we'll, what we'll see. So this distillation process will never quite achieve 100% purity. Well, it will never come close. Simply because the strong hydrogen bonding forces some water to always be attached to the ethanol as it comes out. So when we heat it, 
right? We're heating this ethanol. So an ethanol molecule might come out, but because there's such strong hydrogen bonding, because ethanol has an OH in it, it will drag water with it. So it'll always take some water with it. So we can never quite get 100% purity, and that's, that's the reason why. Because they're, so, they're just so strongly soluble with each other that it's just not possible. So what we will notice is distillates with higher ethanol percentage will weigh less per milliliter. So let's say we collect 10 mils and it has more ethanol than, say, someone else. We will weigh it and we'll find that it will weigh less. And that's because ethanol's density is lower than the, the density of water. So for the same volume of ethanol, if there's more ethanol, it will be less dense. And if it's less dense, then it will obviously weigh less because there's not as much matter in the same volume. Okay? So those are the typical results that we're likely to see when we study this um, distillation process. And so we spoke about what we're actually doing in the distillation process and why we want to do it. So we'll move on to the question segment. And some of these questions that I brought up earlier hopefully will be answered for you. So firstly, why is the water bath kept at 78 degrees rather than 100 degrees? Okay? A legitimate question, because shouldn't 100 degrees give you more energy so it should go faster? So 78 is the boiling point of water. That doesn't really make sense because water, we don't want to boil the water at all. And even then, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees. So that's not right. 100 degrees will, will cause the reaction to occur, to occur more rapidly. More likely than that, it'll, it will heat it up faster and things like that, but more likely the water will boil and contaminate our sample, which is bad. Okay? We don't want that. 78 degrees translates to the activation energy of this chemical change. So a lot of fancy words there, but don't be fooled by it, because remembering this change is simply physical. We're just turning it from liquid to gas, so that's a physical change, and so it's not a chemical one, so this one can't be true. So this one, B, is correct in that only, we only want the ethanol to boil. So the temperature is kept at the boiling point of ethanol rather than the boiling point of water. So it's lower than the boiling point of water. So the water shouldn't boil. And so the ethanol will boil out, and hopefully we can collect it. Okay. So hopefully that answers one of the questions. So moving on. Why is a water bath needed? So again, I brought this up. Why do we need this water bath in the first place? Why don't we just put it over the Bunsen burner and you know, heat it up? Shouldn't it be faster? The water bath helps to distribute the heat evenly. That's the first thing. Okay? Water bath helps to distribute that heat evenly. Without it, concentration of heat, so by heating one section, it may cause that area to reach high temperatures, much higher than 78 degrees uh, in some locations. This high temperature may boil the water in that area and then contaminate the sample. So remember, we always want to not contaminate the sample. Okay? Additionally, uh, with relation to this point, by heating it straight from the Bunsen burner, we have less control over the heat, the temperature. Okay? So we can't control the temperature as closely, so again, we may contaminate our sample. Okay? So hopefully that answers the question of why we needed the water bath when I brought it up. So now we'll explain, now hopefully you guys will be able to explain why it's not possible to achieve 100% purity using distillation. So remembering that we're always talking about explain, and so we're talking about causes and effects. Okay? So as you can see here, ethanol has a polar OHN. So this part is quite polar because of the O. Very electronegative, creates dipole, and so Water is also strongly polar. We know this. We've always known this. Water is strongly polar molecule. Now, because they're both very polar, hydrogen bonding occurs between the water and the ethanol. So very strongly attached to one another um, is the ethanol to the water because of that hydrogen bonding. Now, this strong bonding causes water to be pulled out with ethanol when it is boiled. So when it comes out of into gas form, it tends to pull some water with it, and so the water will always be present. Whenever we condense it, it'll condense as well. Whenever we boil it, it'll drag some water out. So we'll always have some water there, which is why we can never quite reach 100% purity. Okay. So 
We have to do additional processes, some very fancy chemical processes, which we may talk about in future lessons, um, in order to get 100% purity. But for now, just know that and be able to explain why we can't get 100% purity. Okay, so that wraps up today's lesson on the distillation of ethanol and water. So you've learned about what the simple ethanol and water distillation process is. And in essence, we can scale that up to fractional distillation when we think about it. So I hope you've learned something useful, and I hope you've been able to answer the questions. And so I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.